Welcome back to the charismatic voice. Never have I ever had a song in my shortlist for so long and not done it. This channel really started getting going in the beginning of 2020. And at that time, I saw quite a few recommendations for Poets of the Fall, but never enough to win the top recommended song. Still, I put them on my shortlist. But then there were other songs that came in and they kept getting bumped forward. And this has gone on for nearly three years now. Finally, I've been seeing them rank multiple times in our Patreon polls, but again, not winning the top slot. So I just said, screw it. At this point, they deserve to be heard. So let's get to it. Mm. Mm. This is this is a really cool uh this is really cool sound design of the intro. It feels fuzzy, almost like static at first, like wind. And then it suddenly has this whoosh as you go through the gate and this clarity of the guitar that comes out. Ah, ooh. Sounds like maybe some sort of filter. I feel like I'm flying. That feels like the wind going by. And then the... That's really cool. And it sounds instantly very present and clear. Do you breathe the name of the Savior in your hour of need? And taste the blame if the flavor should remind you of greed, of implication in sin. Ooh. Ooh, I like where this is going. I... There's something very attractive about his voice. It, there's an immediacy to it. He instantly feels emotionally available in his voice. Um, there's also an eagerness in it. There's, there's a lot of emotions that I sense right away. Um, uh, I think I love the clarity of it. I love the tenderness of it, uh, but I also am loving the music video. <laughs> when I go back, it's such an interesting concept, having the singer be this character that comes to life with coins and it feels like this post-apocalyptic world with some sort of mask here. That first line, the it has so much longing in it. It's like this character wants to be alive. I think the singer's name, I believe, is Marco. Um, yeah, I love how much emotion is packed into what feels like a fairly simple vocal line so far. <laughs> love those little tiny extra notes in there. It has like a little ornamentation. I also think part of the emotional accessibility that I was talking about before is in the vibrato. There's a, a certain urgency in the vibrato. One more time. Do you breathe the name of your savior in your hour of need and taste the blame if the flavor Remind you of greed, of implication, insinuation, and ill will. Till you I 
love the delicacy of the way he got off of that note, that you hear it like just it's like a little extra creak in the sound after, or like as he's releasing it. Right? Oh. <laughs> it's so effective. <laughs> really really digging his sound oh, I'm gonna come back to this word emotional availability in his sound or accessibility both work there's a way I just think his sound connects to us it's it's so interesting his sound is it's more middle in a male's vocal range right like more baritone and it has a little more depth in it. And especially when we got heavier in this part, rather than taking it up an octave, he stayed there and then just pumped more volume and power into it, which tells me, I don't think he's going to be a tenor. I don't think he's going to be crazy high. He might have some great high notes at some point, but his meat and potatoes of his sound are in this lower range. And I love the way that he's staying in it and just giving us more expression and more emotion. It feels like there's this incredible story that's coming through and uh, there are tons of little things that he's doing with his expression, which are just fascinating and make me want to dig in further and further. I'm going to go back to the beginning of this course. Love the way it kind of came crashing in. That creak off. Listen to the way he uses vibrato right there. He actually used vibrato to build intensity. Come closing in for a kill. Come feed the rain. Cause I'm thirsty for your love. Dancing underneath the skies of lust. Yeah, feed the rain. Cause without you love my life. Ain't nothing but this carnival of rust oh. uh, That's a really good holler at the end too. I am thinking about these lyrics and I feel like there's so many different ways we could explore them. Right? Come feed the rain. Wait, does rain need to be fed? I mean... I think evaporation could could help, but then you think about this title, Carnival of Rust, and it feels like it's celebrating some sort of, uh, perhaps the rust that all humans have, essentially from just living life sometimes out in the rain. So it's like celebrating perhaps the the fallacies that all of us have incurred through life, <laughs> uh, the little bits of damage. Ah, oh, I'm, I'm really, really liking this entire premise. And then I look at the carnival that's going on here in the music video, and the way that things just all kind of look like they're falling apart a little bit. It, it, I feel like it's, celebrating human condition in many ways. Uh, <laughs> I'm fascinated. Okay, let's go back and we'll keep going.
That's cool. Going down a rabbit hole, huh? bits of expression he has in this it's and the way that things have quieted here to allow that little, little tiny bits to come through are fantastic there's so so many tiny things he's doing I don't think a person would just plan that I could go back and analyze you know exactly how he's making all of these different sounds but truthfully I think how he's actually thinking about making these sounds is just by letting emotion flow into him. Because ultimately, there are so many adjustments that we can make on our face and our vocal tract, and all of those adjustments can change our sound. But if we try and manipulate each one, it's just too much to handle, too much to think about. If you just go to emotion, those things automatically shift. And that's what makes voice so beautiful and so emotionally accessible is when we feel something, we let that feeling travel into our voice and let, let our voices be a conduit of the emotion. And he does this so very well. And it's like the emotions he's experiencing have so many layers to them too. Like, look at his eyes. He has such a clean approach to his singing and uh, there's so much beauty in the fundamental sound. I think I read somewhere that he did some sort of classical training at one point. I feel that presence in his voice. Uh, it just has a, like a lyricness to it. But at the same time, it, it feels like it's got an some contemporary elements that have come in, right? We don't have this really heavy, thick sound. Instead, it sounds like a basis of his training that is, there's a foundation that is super solid and makes it possible to uh, really get out of the way and just let the emotions fall through. <sighs> it's delicious. It's a beautiful voice. No disaster can touch <laughs> Touch us anymore And more than ever I hope to never fall Where enough is not the same It was before Oh my gosh, these lyrics I'm going back to this verse It's all a game Avoiding failure And two colors will bleed Like Oh my goodness, right? people are interesting because of scars, because of things that have happened in the past, because of failures that have happened. Um, that's, that's interesting because people are resilient and we overcome and that makes for a person that you want to get to know more and understand more about. All right. I lust for after no disaster can touch, touch us anymore. My gosh, these lyrics are brilliant. And the things we go back to this. No, go back further. All in the name of misbehavior and the things we don't need I lost for after no disaster Oh, 
I love the way he builds intensity in his voice here, right? Uh, we get more, a little more snarl. We also get some more resonance, a little more pressure behind the voice to build that volume up as well. But then you have the vibrato, which gains intensity too. Also, I just, the imagery in this is amazing. Amazing. The, the way he feels trapped inside of this box that needs coins to make him come to life, combining it all with the words. I just, this really captures me. Thank you to everyone who's consistently been recommending this. Uh, I think you guys understand me really well. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm loving the larynx. Oh, the way you switched them up there was so cool. This is going to go somewhere really cool. When you have that kind of drop and build, it's going to happen that there's something cool right afterwards. Love the way he's using his falsetto in here and, and using that sort of different vocal weight and vocal texture to add a lot of, um, a lot more, a lot more layers, a lot more elements into the sound. I'm gonna go back. I, it's hard to say what exactly it is about this that feels like it's so hard to pause. It was really hard to pause. <laughs> I, I feel such an emotional building, emotional swelling with this. Um, and it's because I feel that, again, that's, an instant emotional connection that he established with us at the beginning. And then the desperateness that we hear in his voice here, he hasn't jumped up an octave, right? He's not going crazy in his range. The harmony stuff, that was much, much higher. He had some really nice falsetto that was up there, but he's stayed within actually a fairly limited range for the entire melody that he's piping through so much emotion and such a wide range of dynamics it's just, it's, it's capturing, right? Like, like I don't feel capable of going for the pause button. I was just stuck. Also the paint coming off of his hand. Oh my gosh. That's so good. 
creepy. The tear, the single tear. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was a struggle to pause. Part of the reason it was a struggle to pause is because he carried the line through to the next one. He didn't breathe there and said he increased intensity with vibrato and dynamic once again. And I go back. It's so interesting, the quietness of the voice, the way he's playing with some registration there, going back and forth between falsetto at one point, and um, the way he also, he does a sort of like a slide off, but kind of into like a little crackly sound um, that just feels heartbreaking. <laughs> The way it goes into the deep chest resonance at the end of those two phrases. I love it. This. Carry through is amazing. Let's go back to that note. I, I think that part of the intensity here, at least part of it, is coming from the breathing choices, the way he's carried through phrases, the way he built in that dynamic there, and then just sustained this note for such a long time. Oh my gosh. This is a really long phrase. Just a little bit. I'm gonna go. I know it's almost done here. I just want to go back a little bit more. The like, there's like this break in his voice as he finishes singing that really long note. It just feels so heart wrenching. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Right there. Oh my gosh. <sighs> oh my gosh. <sighs> wow. That's so gorgeous. You do not have to have a seven octave range to have an incredible voice. This is a great example of a melody that is staying rather contained range-wise, yet it is communicating so much emotion. It's so effective. It's beautiful. Yeah, he goes into other ranges for the harmonies, but the meat of it is in that main melody, and it is just fantastic throughout. It is gripping, and I love it. Thank you so much to everyone that kept recommending this. If you want to see a list of other songs that I feel are just, 
underrated or recommended forever, you can check out this playlist over here and may you fall more in love with music every day.